Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorkov, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. If you believe in the future of electric vehicles and the batteries that power them, then Power Nickel is the emerging growth company you need to start paying attention to because as the company said in a press release just the other day, this mineral resource estimate establishes Power Nickel as one of the world's best nickel investment opportunities. And they're saying that because their NISC property with, numer with numerous historical high-grade nickel intercepts is in the jurisdiction uh, with three other battery, battery metal uh, explorers, including critical elements and Namaska lithium. Highlights here, they're targeting 20 to 50 million tons of nickel over the next two years, and they're aiming to make NISC the world's first carbon neutral nickel mine. That's That would be unbelievable and revolutionary. And recent financings show the third party validation that Terry and his team aren't just talking their own book. That's because CVMR, the world leader in nickel powder, wire, and anode production, and a key supplier to the battery, defense, and aerospace industry, did a $2.75 million, $2 million financing round at 90 cents per share in flow through financing. That's to fund a feasibility program. And Rob McHugh needs no introduction to anybody, a mining hall of famer led the company's most recent financing round. And today, the press was talking about 431101 is out in excess of 7.2 million indicated tons. Terry, welcome back, my friend. Good to be back, George. It's, it's indicated and inferred. 5.4 indicated, 1.8 inferred. Uh, first of all, your quote. We believe this mineral resource estimate established us as one of the world's best <coughs> nickel investment opportunities. I mean, you're well known in the industry. Uh, you're you're a leader, and for you to make a statement like that, you're not just saying that to talk your book. Before we get to the numbers, back that up for us. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so we basically just compare ourselves to, to other high grade nickel sulfide projects around the world that are undeveloped, and we look at their market cap versus the number of tons they have, and you look at, at ours, and you'd see that we're trading at between ten to twenty percent of their value. Yet we obviously, you know, now on a on a market cap per ton basis would be the cheapest when when we're arguably in the best jurisdiction, best location, perhaps even have the most upside in terms of exploration. So uh, that's how we make that math, George, is, is just by going through the math of the deposits, mm -hmm. comparing apples for apples. And, and if you did that as a rational person, you, you'd come to that conclusion. All right. So this isn't just subjective. Terry thinks his baby is the most beautiful baby in the world. This is apples to apples, math to math. And I guess that explains why you've got the backing of the likes of Rob McEwen and CVMR, right? These are very smart people. You can't pull the wool over their eyes. If you're just talking smack, they're not going to be in your financing rounds, right? That's that's 100%. Yeah. Um, you So the 431 is out. 132% increase over the historical 3.1 million tons. How happy were you uh, for this to be released? Yeah, I mean, it's great to get it out and put this, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, flag in the sand, if you would. And and uh, we think it establishes as a commercial deposit. I think you really need to get to 10 million plus to really sort of uh, uh, be, you know, uh, super uh, positive for the for the sector. But, uh, you know, we see that visibility just around the corner. And, uh, you know, we've got... Uh, Six of the seven holes we drilled this fall weren't included in the resource, so there, there's, there's we already know there's more there, and, and we, we don't have any problem uh, seeing a as, as we talked about in the outset. You know, Lynn Lake it was another ultramafic deposit, 22 million tons. Boise Bay is over plus 50. We think we're certainly going to be in that range and towards I think the top top end of it. You know, so uh, that's uh, that's sort of where we're uh, you know we're, we're charging for, and we think we're off to a hell of a start. I have to mark down that Boise's Bay comment because I want to put that in a clip because that, but that's that's really saying something. Um, now, question: You had devil's advocate in in interviews before. You had mentioned you were targeting eight to million, eight to ten uh, million tons when estimating what it would be. Why we come in at seven point two, which is still a great number. Yeah, but yeah. How do you how do you fall just a little short there? Yeah, so basically just didn't get some of the assays back in time to include them in the report. So that, that would be the, the primary reason. And 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 it's um, you know, when you do a 4311, it's grade and tonnage, right? So so uh the, the lower you drop your grade, the more you increase your tonnage. And uh our metallurgical results were, I would say they're okay, 
uh, if you're for making a concentrate, we, we had a grade of about 1.13% when you combine them. Uh, and, and basically, uh, you know, that was for the concentrate. You know, working with CVMR, one of the reasons that was so attractive for us to work with them is that they make a finished product. So instead of making a concentrate, which is great for the refineries, but not so good for the miners, because you get a lot of material in the in the rock uh, to make the concentrate in a way that they like to process it. And they sort of dictate uh, when you have your own facility where you're making powders, wires, anodes, precursors for the EV plants, you can generate over 90 percent uh, material. So we'll pick up, we think, 30 percent. So we'll get that grade back and that will act automatically enhance the tonnage that we can do as well. So so we're we're feeling that, you know, within the, the 43101, it's a very rigorous and very uh, mandated type of disclosure and what can be done. And, and when we get to the point where we'll have benchmarking studies from CBMR and, and, and uh, prototype discoveries, then we'll be able to use that in the next update of the 43101 or a PEA or whatever, and possibly, you know, the bankable feasibility study as we go forward. So ultimately, you know, we feel like those numbers will be obtained and they're already there. It just was a, uh, you know, how the process had worked to, to make it a concentrate versus the end product. So the one point, the one point one three percent nickel equivalent, you think thanks to CBMR and their refining and processing, they're going to be able to take it up to where you yeah. need to get to about that one point five percent range. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and, it, and it's not that we need to get there because most people would die to have one point one three percent. But yeah. to get to one point five, it, it just enhances your economics, means that, you know, in terms of. Uh, uh, adding more tonnage, you can you can uh, you know can you can bring in lower grade materials because now your cutoff is you know you've got more to work with. So there, there's a, there's a lot of pluses to it. Um, overall, how should the market? What should the market take away from this report? Because I think it's a great start. Seven point two million tons. Uh, you, what do you, you want know, the market I, I, to take I, away from this report? Yeah, the market should take away from this report that this thing is going to become a mine. And mines get paid, wow. and and we're we're right now as if we're like some sort of uh, just explorer out there that's hoping to track, you know, track down something, trading for like thirty five million or something when we should be trading for two hundred million in my mind. Because if, if I had to sell this tomorrow to industry, I, I would get that. I hundred percent believe if I put up a for sale site on NIST tomorrow, I would sell this to industry and would have lined up to come in to buy it at that price, because this thing's got upside way beyond that. But, you know, it's so it's like there's a disconnect in the market here. And, uh, you know, we're, th we're not the only one. But now that we've gotten the proof, you know, there was a number of funds couldn't buy until we had posted a 43101, right? So so we had to get that in place, you know, just for some funds to be able to legitimately put them put us in their portfolio. We're at the end of the year, you know, they'll start the new year off. You know, so we're I think the next, uh, you know, you know, three, four months is going to be really critical. Like we're, we'll, we'll, we'll see, I think, uh, a big uh, charge up in the valuation based upon these math numbers that people do. And uh, obviously more, more drilling results, more news, benchmark studies from CVMR, prototype studies from CVMR, you know, updated uh, exploration, you know, uh, you know, results, et cetera. So um, just action packed over the next uh, literally six months. So, so, uh, you know, we're, we're at some point, George, it's got to, the math has got to go up radically North. Or we'll have to sell the thing for two hundred million because we can't keep stealing the, the from our current shareholders. You know that's just not right. You know, so so we we you know and that's we'll, several we'll multiples. Have... By the way, a lot of people watching this don't know where your market cap is right now. But at two hundred million dollars, you're talking about multiple, multiple, multiple yeah, uh, appreciation. Minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go back because a couple of times you talk about what's coming next six months, and you rattled off a few things, but not everyone's familiar. If we could just go a little slower, just give us a bit of a cadence of what you expect to take place. Or what what are the next steps now? Because you're yeah, not, so, it's so, not just drilling and assays and drilling and assays. You got a lot more going on. So let's yeah. kind of go through that a little bit. Sure. So so basically, you know, we're running on down a couple of pathways. We're running down the pathways of seeing how big this thing can be, which is the exploration right. pathway. So let's talk about that first, and then we'll get into the production side. So on the exploration side, uh, tomorrow on um, Wednesday, we're hosting at four o'clock. And you can find it on our website, um, and uh, uh, it's it's a it's a podcast with uh, Fleet Space Technologies. Space. Fleet uh, does the ambient noise tomography, which I really think is going to revolutionize the industry. And and it's it's not it can't be used in just by itself. 
you know, can't you, you got you need you know uh, gravity, you need seismic, you need you need IP, you need uh, downhole EM, airborne EM, all those tools. But if you put this on top of it, it's really the secret sauce, and it's amazing. And so it's actually Australia's fastest growing company now. Um, you know, I think they got a billion dollar valuation, private private company. Uh, Rio Tinto is their biggest customer. So uh, these guys are, you know, really exciting. So the, we, we were one of the, I mean, I think probably we're definitely the first client in Canada. And, uh, and, and you know, the uh, we came across it because Elon Musk brought it to Talon Metals when he did his off-take agreement. So uh, SpaceX put them in, in, in satellites in the sky. So we're going to do that. Uh, we've done a major body of work with them, four months of, of, of work. And it's pretty exciting what we've seen. And we're going to talk about that in depth tomorrow. And basically what we see is that we've got this one pod. It's helping us explore that more efficiently. And we've gotten some examples of early victories on that. And then we see at least two, you know, two to the north and, and two uh, to the northeast and two to the southwest uh, of identical pods to this main. And, and what they found is that there's an actual signature where they, what their uh, system does is measures the velocity of the rock. So, so they, in, in, in this case, the ultra mapping right. sense, it's crazy. I know, but you know, it turns out everything in life has a, everything on the earth has a velocity that you can measure in a wave. And, and so it's, it, the ultra mapping rocks about 4,500 meets. And, and then when it drops off to about 37, this is where the this is where the mass of sulfides get deposited, almost on a one for one basis. So what we've been able to do is identify this signature as what's working, you know, in this part of the Earth. And so we say, okay, where else in our land package do we have that signature? Okay. And so we look there. We've got like four big areas that have that signature and and fit our other criteria what we're looking for. So there is a highly desirable target areas, and we'll and we'll be drilling those, uh, you know, this winter. So um, you know. The, you know, the, the question is, okay, will there be another discovery like this? Well, highly likely, given that every nickel sulfide mine in the history of man since uh, time immemorial has always been multiple pod. It just seems to be that's how Mother Earth, you know, uh, you know, pops it up. Now, could we be the first that isn't like it? I guess we could. You can always be the first. Uh, but, I mean, the most unusual, <laughs> be the first in the history of man. So I, I, I don't think that's likely to happen based upon what we see. We'll bet against that scenario. We'll go with Mother Nature. That we'll go with Mother Nature. 99.8% so, so I, I likely to have multiple pods. And, and my guess is we haven't found the best pod yet. So we're going to find a bigger pod with richer ore. Because what are the odds you got the best one first if there's five of them? 20 percent, one in five. So you know, so and, and you remember that step out hole we did to the north, uh, northwest, where, where we're going to start uh, northeast. Pardon me, where we'll start drilling after Christmas, where we had the eight meters of the one ounce PGMs. I mean, that's that's super rich, right? So that's that's where we're going to start the uh, the show off in the new year. You know, so uh, yeah, we're we're pretty pumped about that. So the exploration really is going to come, you know, by following up these pods, and then we're also uh, I don't know if you know this, but in nickel, nickel is quite heavy, right? In association with iron, it's, it tends to sink. So most nickel mines, the action is from 500 meters to two kilometers. So NISC is that. most un most that. unusual in that we're from surface to 500 meters. We might have four or five pods in that range, which would be like crazy. It could be like 30, 50 million tons just with that. But then like if you look at Norilsk, Norilsk was found as a surface deposit, smallish, 10, 20 million tons. And then they found that the deep monsters, you know, that have made Norils the only trillion dollar deposit in Earth. Um, and, uh, you know, so is there something deeper here? Again, most likely, you know, so it, it, when, it seems like when nickel gets deposited, it tends to go deep. So, you know, it could be that we'll find this stuff up top and then there's going to be some deeper stuff. So we're, we're doing some, you know, we're going to be uh, over the next, you know, 12 to 18, 24 months, we'll be doing some deeper targeted research, you know, directional drilling to, uh, you know, as we do, we're going to be doing some deeper probes probably with the uh, uh, fleet this summer on the, on the very deep stuff. You know, I'm talking, you know, 500 meters to one kilometer deep. Um, and who knows? I mean, so, so I think the, you know, when people ask me, what, you know, cause I, I, I will tell them it's the best nickel, investment deal on the planet, planet. Not, not the one of them. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and, they, and they say, well, why do you say that? And I say, well, it's all about this asymmetric risk. I think if you're an investor, and I'm just an investor, George, I'm not a geologist, I'm not a geophysicist, I'm just a, a, you know, an investor that you know, wants to make a profit on my own capital and for my shareholders. 
And, and so what we'd like to do is take a little risk and have a lot of potential return. That's what asymmetric investing is all about. And that's what we've got a chance to do here, you know, at, at NIST is, we, you know, we, we've got something that's very valuable, worth far more than we're at right now. And we'll be able to monetize that if we have to. But if we can hang in the game here, we may want to be beyond to something that could be truly remarkable. We could have, you know, one of the biggest deposits ever. You know, and, and it's like it's you're generation, not for it. right? Yeah. Shareholders and we're not paying for today it. Could like, be benefiting wow, from this for decades. You got, you got to take those shots. You know, that's what's that's what the magic of mining is all about. And, uh, you know, that's what's made Canada such a legendary place. It's had so many, you know, killer discoveries that were, you know, that 30, 40 years later are still producing for the country, for the community, for the shareholders, you know, and, and, and there's no reason why this can't be another one. Hey, and if uh, fleet, uh, fleet space technologies find something really interesting, hopefully they'll whisper in Elon's ear and say, hey, power <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, you know, I, I it, and, you know, and, and Rio Tinto's ear. I mean, look, we've got a lot of eyeballs on NISC. You know what I mean? The, the Trust me, in, in, our, in our data room, we've got some of the, the biggest, you know, mining companies in the world and and all the battery guys, you know, it's because everyone wants class one nickel in North America. It's super hard to find. And we're the last man standing, you know, so uh, uh, in terms of new supply, you know, so so that's exciting for a lot of people. Well, by the way, let's touch a little bit on carbon neutral, because uh, I said that in my intro, but that's Really important because something I heard uh, uh, last week, Terry, was there was a company that was looking. I can't. I can't be specific, but uh, you know, a big company in the U.S. that was looking to uh, expand uh, its resource, and its board basically said, "Unless you can make it, unless you can do this in a carbon neutral way, don't do it. We don't care because we can't keep. We have to be carbon neutral from here on out. Otherwise, our customers are going to reject us at the end of the day." So how big of it, talk to us a little bit, why yeah. can you be carbon so, so, and so, I mean, so our, advantage that has? Yeah, so I mean, it's a massive uh, competitive advantage for us. And it, and to the most part, uh, it's just luck, George, in that we happen to be uh, in Canada, in Quebec, beside the road, there's Quebec Hydro Station across the road from us. You know, green hydropower is the number one uh, thing. Okay, so we're powering it with, you know, renewable energy. So that that's just, you know, luck, God bless. Uh, we're also lucky in that it's an ultramafic deposit, and we know the ultramafic tailings naturally sequester CO2. So again, you know, not anything that we've engineered. We're just, you know, taking advantage of this natural uh, piece of good luck. Uh, you know, what we have engineered is, you know, we we it's a philosophy. So recognizing the, this was possible for us, we decided that hey, we can differentiate ourselves uh, and be good citizens, but also good economic uh, sense for our, our shareholders by you know, wrapping ourselves in the carbon neutral five. So we we use carbon X to offset our drilling, you know, and they're they're a leader in that space. And we'll use them going forward. And then then we we looked at people, you know, there's three ways to make nickel smelting, hydrometallurgy, and chemical metal vapor process. So the chemical metal vapor process been around for hundred years. The leader in that space is CVMR. And it's the most environmentally friendly approach to making nickel. So no no external air or water. So it's the, it's the least carbon intensive. So so by working with them, we we can we can blend it all together. And then we'll, what we'll wrap it up with is we'll actually add a recycling plant as part of the process. Is what our thinking is because it's very economic to do so at the uh, outset, extra like fifteen million in capex. And then all of a sudden you, we can take back batteries at the end of their life and break them down into their, their component parts and and, and remerchandise it. So 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 that will make us literally carbon neutral or maybe even carbon positive and that will be phenomenal uh economically we, we expect to generate an extra 1500 to 2000 dollars a ton that's a benchmark you know associates that's a number that they've come up with uh and it will also we just think make our product that much more desirable for all of our end use customers right because they'll be able to say hey i've got this great clean quebec nickel that's you know it's quite carbon neutral you know, and, and that, you know, that will allow them to do other things with their other, you know, because as they're building these these parts, that becomes part of the economics is that I got to get to uh, this carbon footprint number. You know, if I not, if I can get to it, you know, using this nickel, then it means I can be a little bit more offside over here, and maybe yeah. save some money over there in another way, you know. So it really does become a, a really interesting uh, dynamic. And that's, you know, that's the production side that we we talked about exploration. And I think, you know, the, 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 the production side of this thing is, you know, uh, the, the other big plus, the CVMR, 
Uh, uh, Marcus kind of threw that because you're you you're in a very unique position with them. You've already got somebody telling you, "Hey, Terry, we'll take your nickel. We'll make it even better uh, grade, higher grade, better quality, and then we'll get more money out of it at the end of the day." Rather than, "All right, Terry, found this nickel. You and George are going to go shovel it out and just sell it uh, on the back of a truck like everybody else does." Walk us through that because that's huge to have that in your back pocket, and they're putting yeah, money yeah. In that, so that so 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 that was like you know something that we 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 learned, you know, and because I had, I only ever thought that we'd be selling a, a concentrate. So so when I was introduced by this banker friend of mine to uh, CVMR, it was like, you know, it was a bit of I I had not that much experience in the sector, so I had to get educated as to you know they were basically the Finnish you know, refiner, you know, that they, they actually they have they have mines that go full mine to refinery too, but they have a number of refinery plants, and and what they are is that they're they're pretty much the top technical nickel producer in the world. I'd say, or arguably one of them. Anyway, I mean, if you think of this, they they make the plate that makes the U.S. one hundred dollar bill. So you imagine the scrutiny you would have wow. to go through to 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 be accepted by the U.S. Department of Treasury to handle that <laughs> that little uh, that little treasure is is a. There's a funny story about that that, that uh, we can get into perhaps if we have time. But but uh, so there's one. The second is their biggest client is the U.S. Department of Defense. They have two joint ventures with them. So, you know, they can't even tell me what they make for those guys. <laughs> you know, but obviously, uh, you know, nickel has a lot of tremendous properties. So for aerospace, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, these types of things, it's enormously attractive and they make the best, right? So they, the super colliders have these $10 million nickel tubes, five nines purity, they make them. So, so obviously these guys are, are very top technical in, you know, approach and what they do that this process basically breaks the thing down to the, the atom. So the nickel atom gets atomized and then they reformat it into whatever powders or nano powders Jeez, or wires. Or whatever. Is, man. Yeah. And it's pretty crazy. And, and so these guys are like, it's just a, a brilliant chemical process that these guys have figured out reagents and just like, you know, these guys are, you know, this process has been developed over the years and it's, like, it's amazing, you know, and like, and, and, and some of the, you know, the, the most senior people from Inco retired and are now working with, with uh, CVMR. And these guys are like, you know, the, the top of the top of the top, you know, so, uh, you know, so it's really comforting to, to work with people of that caliber and uh, to have them excited about your project because they, they recognize that you know the you know that it's very difficult to get economic org grades you know in nickel you know it, it's it's very hard and and it, you know it's this thing will probably cost I don't know somewhere between three and four hundred million we'll obviously find that out in the feasibility process that CVMR is doing um, but uh, you know uh, but it's far less expensive than than say the these lower grade processes which have to have so much crushing and so much power you know they're they're in excess of a billion. Their returns are, you know, less than twenty percent. I'm sure our our ours would be, you know, over a hundred percent. Like this thing will pay out in a year. It's crazy, and and it'll and and like it's like CMR said, you really should be starting to see yourself as a refiner, not a miner, because this this will never be idle. Like when your ore bodies run out, let's hope you let's hope you get the fifty million tons or hundred million tons, or whatever might be down there. Uh, when it, it runs out, because it eventually will run out. We will bring another ore, and we'll be still making the you know products here. Because this is what happens with refiners; you never they never get shut down. So so uh, it's pretty interesting, you know. And and uh, you know he he's in, he, he contacted me today. I was chatting with him. He's in uh, he's in the Democratic of the Rep uh, Congo, where he's he he does work down there. They've, they've got some facilities down there, and and he's saying, look, you know what? We're going to be able to ship you cobalt from here. Uh, you have to process at that facility. You know, that's one of the things I'm working on. You know, so I mean, so this will become not just a nickel thing. It'll become, you know, what we'll be getting into other 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 uh, projects, which is awesome, right? So uh, yeah, so it's it's a really uh, exciting opportunity that we, we were able to uh, network our way into, and uh, you know, they're fair-minded people. We're, we're having a great working relationship right now, and, and uh, uh, we hope it continues to unfold. And the next steps are. They'll provide us a benchmark studies. Uh, we would hope to get that out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that would sort of okay, say- So we're going to more coming up for Christmas. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Those benchmark studies would be pretty important because that 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 point where I say about us getting the extra 30% back in the grade, that'll be substantiated by the benchmark studies. 
And then, then we'll get into the, the actual prototype studies, which will be, say, another two months beyond that, to where they actually build the mini plant and they run our ore through it. And, and then it's like no longer theoretical, it's like actual. So, so that, that, that's when you can start to do your engineering and make, make your design flows and, and, and really start to uh, see what you're going to get. So, so yeah, so I mean, we're, we're steaming right along and, and uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, um, you know, this is a, it's exciting and, and, and people should see that this is going to become a mine and mines get paid and we haven't gotten paid yet. So folks, you know, Christmas sale is on already at Power Nickel. So fill your uh, Christmas stockings. You won't be, uh, you, <laughs> I, I, I won't be the Christmas, I won't be the Christmas Grinch. I'll be the Christmas Lynch. So, uh, you know, we'll leave it at that. I like that. I'm actually writing that down because I want to make sure I get that. I get that as a clip. Last question. Last question. Because things are going really well. Not perfect. Nothing ever goes perfect. I don't care what business you're in. Hell, yep. Google just announced yesterday they're delaying their AI large language model until January, February because they can't get it right yet. So nothing ever goes perfect and you're not either. But it's going pretty damn well. It's going yep. pretty damn well. A year from now, here we are in December 2023. A year from now, if everything goes reasonably as expected, not perfect and not catastrophic, you know, somewhere around 80, 85% of expectations. Yes. Um, what are we talking about, you know, 12 months from now? So I, I would think we, we would have had, uh, you know, identified uh, at least another couple of pods that we'd have advanced them into our mineral resource. And we'd be looking at at least doubling our resource from where we're at. So I'm like getting to, you know, 15 million tons and looking like it's, it's going to get bigger. And uh, I think we uh, will, we'll have it ha identified, have delivered a feasibility study, which shows, uh, you know, for a, uh, you know, uh, 3,500 ton per day plant that we can probably generate, you know, in the order of 500 million and free cash flow, uh, you know, so that, that, that would be just stunning. Um, and uh, I think that uh, my guess is we'll we'll have uh, put on uh, a million ounces of PGNs on the balance, uh, you know, as well. So not only going to be a great nickel story, but we're going to have you know these PGNs as a you know phenomenal uh, you know either value enhancer for us in terms of uh, you know enhancing their revenue stream, or as a uh, if we need uh, you know on the financing side to get creative and and you know in a way that you know uh that you know that that that's uh makes sense at the time you know you, you, that becomes a separate stream that you could easily monetize in a, in a big way you know so it gives you a lot that's one of the great things about having a polymetallic deposit like we have is you know nickel is the primary thing but we've got copper we've got cobalt we've got pgns so all those things give you a lot of financing flexibility so i i think you know we would we would be you know in really great shape and i and i think we would be uh uh, probably at that point be, you know, moving towards a, a bankable feasibility study as, a, as the next step, you know, and, and uh, looking to try and, you know, get this in the, uh, you know, uh, so we could, you know, be uh, constructing and, 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 you know, identifying a construction pathway that obviously goes through the environmental process, which is going to be like two years, um, you know, so, but we probably could look at a, like a 29, you know, late 28, early 30, somewhere in that range. Uh, you know, kick off to this. So I would think we'd have a, a lot more visibility on that, you know, 12 months from now. I was going to say, the great thing about Power Nickel, in addition to everything we talked about today, is that in 12 to 15 months, I'll even add on a little cushion, but 12 to 15 months, we're going to have a pretty damn good idea about what Power Nickel's got. Unlike sometimes, George Calm Gold, I say, hey, we're drilling. I saw Shiny Rock in Greece. We're going to drill this area. And it'll take us five years of drilling just to get an idea of what we got. You're talking about in 12-ish months, give or take, you got a really great idea about what Pyre Nickel's got. And then you'll be putting that into some kind of commercial uh, you know, application. Three, four yeah, because I, I, mean, I, I think the expiration at NISC will, will probably take two, three years to see and may go on for more. I mean, but you, 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 don't, you don't know until you see, right? The 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 uh, surface stuff, I think we could do in a couple of years. The deeper stuff, you know, could could take, a, you know, a lot longer. But we're talking about putting, you know, like a, 
you know, you know, uh, you know, a much bigger envelope at that point in time. But I mean, that's that's going to be part of it, right? I mean, like you, you look at the Narils complex; it's vast, George. It wasn't discovered in one day. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> Things taken thirty years. You know, so that's what will happen here. So what you want to do? What we want to do is just, just you know, sort of, you know, measure the football field. You know, we won't we won't be able to drill it all in, but see how how big is this football field? How deep is it? Yeah, you know, so we're going to start to answer that some of that next year, but it'll take some time. But the cool part about our approach is, you know, we only need really, you know, we've, we've got what we need right now. That's why CVR is working this. They're working with us with the view that, hey, let's fast track this and get this in production ASAP because we need the gear. We need the material. Wow. The, the world needs the material. We can get the capital stack together. And so that's why we're pursuing that, you know, and, and then at the same time, Let's see how big this can be, because the neat thing about their model, is it's a modular approach, so we can add, you know, uh, other modules to it and add another another thirty five hundred tons a day, you know, and so forth and so on. So 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 the more, you know, uh, lifespan we have for the mine, we can we can, you know, we can add, you know, another unit or two if that's uh, justified. And so, you know, I think, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, the dream would be that this would become a world class mine. And a world class mine would be defined as a million tons of contained nickel. So uh, you know that you know uh, ten million tons is probably one tenth of that. So you need to you know it, you know get if, if one and a half percent you're one you know you're you're you're, you're fifteen percent of that. So you probably need you know seventy million tons to get there. Could it be done? Could be done. You know, so that would make you one of the great and projects of course in the, world. the power nickel store could go on for twenty years, like you said. But that first critical big you know, milestone you want, you can, within 12 months, we'll know just with that, what that big first step is. Yeah. That's the best part. Right. And then after that, just yeah. gravy. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I think the cool part, and this is one of the observations I was making to people when I was in, in Europe in the last couple of weeks, I was saying the great thing is, you know, we delivered the goods this year. We did exactly what we said we we're going to do. And, and, you know, we've been very, you know, creative in getting, the least amount of dilution for our shareholders, I think, is possible. We put the money in the ground. We've, we've, we've made the progress, and it now you can see how valuable it is. And it, it's not a risk for you to buy into that. You know that that stuff is going to get paid. And the question is, you know, it's just how big is the upside? Well, that's that that's what you want. You want to sort of be walking into something that you know is going to get paid three, four, five, six times your money at some point really soon, and and then it's got potential ten times beyond that. You know, but you're not paying for it. So that that's what you want to have. Terry, awesome, man. Fantastic free Christmas conversation. It sounds like we're going to have a little bit more uh, before Christmas. In a couple of yeah. weeks, there's more yeah, coming. The, so. the, it, it, the, lots of news coming. I've got the fleet tomorrow, which I, I think for anybody who's interested, just if you're interested in mining, you should be on that call to see this technology and how uh, we'll show it live and how it's working. It's pretty interesting. So it's exciting for us, but it's also just intellectually exciting for anybody that's, that's in the space to see how how they, they, they can and could be using this this technology to reduce their risk. So that's exciting. And then, of course, in, in about in about uh, sometime in the next two weeks, we'll do a podcast with CVMR after the, the uh, benchmark studies, and we'll you know introduce the world to them because they're obviously a private company and they're not. They're not used to doing these types of things, and they don't have to. Uh, they, they don't need to. <laughs> they don't have to. Sing well, to their maybe dinner. that we can bring them on here to have a three-way conversation. Yeah, yeah they'd, they'd, uh, they'd be, and, and uh, great for investors to hear from them as to what CVMR seeing. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm sure we could do that. Thanks, Terry. Congratulations again. You're delivered. You know, seven point two million tons in this first quarter through one hundred and one. Great, but the great part is all the goodies that come after that. This isn't just a straight ton dig. And show, you know, get it out of the ground and sell it for a couple bucks. There's just so much more, and can't wait. But great first milestone, my friend, and can't wait All to right. have you back. Thanks, George. Appreciate uh, being on here. Cheers for now. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcasts on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Terry Lynch of Power Nickel Trades in Canada, PNPN for our friends in the U.S. PNPN with an F on the end. Uh, and if you've you've heard everything here. And if you want to start your due diligence, if you're a new investor, then get to the company's page on Agoracom to start your due diligence because there's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts. And then head over to the Power Nickel website, do your deep dive due diligence. Because if you believe in the future of electric vehicles, the batteries are going to power them, 
the role that nickel is going to play, the importance of jurisdictional safety, Quebec, the importance of carbon neutral. They're in a great, not only they're in Quebec, but in a fantastic place in Quebec that gets their energy to them as clean as possible. Then you've got to do your due diligence at Power Nickel. And hopefully today you discovered your next amazing battery metals company. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey, small cap fam. I hope you love this interview because more than a dozen people were involved in its production for the sole purpose of making you happy. If so, can you take a moment to support both our awesome guest company and Agoracom? Your engagement means the world to us. First, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up by tapping that like button. It's a small gesture that helps this interview reach even more potential investors to discover today's guest. Second, we would love to hear your feedback on this interview, so please leave a comment below. Be sure to keep it clean, but feel free to poke fun at George. If you loved what you heard on today's video and want to dig into our guest company right away, take a look at the links in the description below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to never miss another great Agora Calm small cap video. Thank you so much. We couldn't do any of this without you. Make sure to come back soon.